110 Board Game Blitz, a podcast about all things board games that you can listen to in less time than it takes to come to terms with the fact that your life was entirely different when this podcast (laughs) first started. Board Game Blitz is sponsored by Gray Fox Games. This week, we're celebrating our eight-year anniversary. We celebrate entering year nine of the show by sharing our updated top 10 games of all time lists. And now, here are your hosts, Ambie and Crystal. Because it is our anniversary, or anniversary, we Ooh. are doing a giveaway! Yay! We are giving away a small box Midgard bundle from our sponsors, Grey Fox Games. Clans Thank of you, Mid- Grey Fox! <laughs> yeah, so it'll be Clans of Midgard and Reavers of Midgard, the card game. Unfortunately, due to shipping being very difficult, it's U.S. shipping only. So to enter the giveaway, there are two ways. The first way to enter the giveaway is to be one of our Kofi supporters. So if you are already supporting us on an ongoing basis on Kofi, you're already entered into the giveaway. You don't have to do anything. If you're not yet supporting us on Kofi, this would be an amazing time to do it. We've been podcasting for eight years. We're entering year nine. We would love to have your support. So um, you can either set up a recurring pledge on Kofi or a one-time donation of $5 or more. We're not asking for a lot just a little bit if you do not want to support us on ko-fi or you can't for some reason you can also email us at boardgameblitz at gmail.com in that email you need to include two things one how long you've been listening to board game blitz and it's okay if that's a very short amount of time like no judgment at all we promise but let us know how long you've been a listener and tell us one thing you'd like to hear on the show in the future and i we're not just shilling for topics because we've been doing this for eight years and we can't think of any, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> and for the subject line, you don't have to put anything special, but you can just put like board game blitz contest or something. Something yeah, that doesn't sound too spammy. <laughs> podcast. We, I love board game blitz. You know, yeah. something that we'll recognize. Yeah. No recently played today, y'all, because we're diving into a big old list of our top 10 games of all time. Beow, 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 beow. Okay. <laughs> you, I wish everyone could see us put our hands up to our mouths simultaneously. And do that. We're adorable, y'all. So yeah, we released our top 100 games for the first time as a podcast back in 2017, I believe. And Ambi has done some updates since then. Mm-hmm. I have not updated my list at all. And I have now finally done my top 100. I have not released any of it yet, though. So you all will be hearing my top 10 today. And I maybe I'll figure out a way to release the rest of it at some point. Oh, it was 2018. <laughs> I was oh, looking it was at, 2018. I think, yeah, okay. the first one was 2018. But it might have been like our list as of the end of 2017 because it was like May of 2018. Oh, yeah. That would probably make sense then. Yep. That was six years ago. That's so wild. Wow, yeah. <laughs> well, Ambi has been releasing all of her top 100 games on our YouTube channel, which if you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, it's free. Come on, go over to YouTube, click the subscribe button. <laughs> it's easy. And you can see Ambi's 100 through 11 on our YouTube channel. And maybe you'll get to see mine there at some point as well. <laughs> but yeah, for now, let's get to Ambi's number 10. Yeah, my number 10 is Monikers, which is a party game. This is, I guess, my favorite party game. So Monikers is kind of similar to Time's Up, if you've heard of that party game. It's a game where you combine a taboo type game where you're where there are cards of different words or phrases and you're trying to make your team guess that word or phrase by saying things that aren't in that word or phrase like describing it but instead of just that there's three rounds that are using the same word pool so then the first round you can say anything the second round you can only say one word and it's using the same word so people kind of remember what happened and then the third round it's you can't say anything and it's just acting it out like charades in monikers there's there's these really long phrases some of them are like internet memes and stuff what i like about monikers over times up is that it has like a description of each phrase so if you don't know what it is which happens often you can just read the description for the first part and then like you kind of figure out what will help clue people into it so (laughs) that's a lot of fun it always ends with like inside jokes of some random thing making a connection to these things that you're guessing later (laughs) yeah like like, the inside (laughs) jokes within the 
game you're yeah. playing that, at that moment. Yeah, because <laughs> somehow like banana makes you think of, I, I don't know. The Pope, that, right? Yeah. Like for like, whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Monikers is my number 10, my favorite party game. My number 10 is actually, I looked, my highest rated party game on my list as well, and that is Just One. I have a few different party games throughout my top 100, and Just One is the game that I will never tire of, and it is good in just about every situation. A raucous party, a chill party, small Mm -hmm. group, large group, it really doesn't matter. For those unfamiliar in Just One, it is a cooperative party game where you have cards with single words on them. One player will put a card face up onto the little display thing in front of them so they can't see it, but everyone else can. And then all the other players write just one word (laughs) onto their little marker board. Then they compare notes, basically. They look at all the words, and if any of them match, they erase them. And then the person with the card gets to see all the clues that didn't match and X each other out. And then they have to guess what the word on the card was. Very simple and... And very fun every time, all the time. Love it, love it, love it. Just one is my number 10. Yeah, just one is great. I don't own that one, but it is on my list. My top I own list. I mean I own two <laughs> copies of it in the same box <laughs> but because you have that way I can play one. with lots of people. No, I play just <laughs> two sometimes. Oh yeah. That's fun too. All right, my number nine is 1889 or Shikoku 1889, which is my favorite 18xx game currently. 18xx, if you haven't heard me talk about it before, it's like a series of economic railroad stock holding games. But in 1889, it's one that people use as an intro game. So like it's a shorter one and I can play it with fewer players. And like it's the one that I get to play most often. So I'm most comfortable with the rules. There aren't that many rules compared to other versions of 18xx games. So because I've been able to play it the most and I can actually like feel comfortable playing it and like manipulating things and doing interesting strategies and stuff. I think that's why it's my favorite 18xx game because it's the one that I've been able to play the most. I did get a review copy of the new Shikoku 1889 and did an instructional video for it. So like I got a free copy of it because I did that video, (laughs) but I was planning on backing this Kickstarter for it anyway. So yeah, I haven't actually played the new version though, but like I had it as a free print and play before that, which is still available as a free print and play if you want to print and play an 18xx game. But yeah, 1889 is my favorite intro 18xx game and my favorite 18xx game. My number nine is Battlestar Galactica. Oh. I know. <laughs> so low. <laughs> was... Well, I mean, nine is so... <laughs> I, I was waiting. Ambie's mouth <laughs> dropped open, I think, wider than I've ever seen it before. <laughs> So uh, I'm pretty sure most of you are aware that for the duration of this podcast, I have specifically touted Battlestar Galactica as my favorite board game of all time. And now that I have redone my list, that is no longer the case. It's still in my top 10, y'all. I still love Battlestar Galactica. Like, I've played hundreds of board games, and it's still in my top 10. So it is still a very amazing game that I love very much, but it has fallen a little bit for a number of reasons for me personally, and that is I'm not able to play it very much, and the experience occasionally can be suboptimal, which that's always been the case, but I think over time I've become a little less tolerant of those moments. I still love it regardless, though. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to explain the mechanics. It would take us eight years. (laughs) You all know it. Battlestar Galactica is my number nine. Wow. All right. My number eight is Witness, which is a exactly four player cooperative deduction-ish game with a telephone memory aspect to it. You have four players and you each get like little booklets that have a snippet of information that you need. And you need all the information in order to answer these questions. And sometimes you need to like use logic puzzles together with the information. But to get the information, you have to whisper it to the person next to you. And that person whispers the information they know to the person next to them. And it's like always going kind of the same direction around in a circle. So if you're whispering to your right, the person to your left only hears your information through the two other people who you (laughs) whisper it to. So it's kind of like a game of telephone and memory plus the logic so it's very unique it's hard to play because it's only four players and exactly four players four players who are comfortable whispering in each other's ears <laughs> which doesn't happen as often now but yeah i really liked it i like how sometimes like the memory is so hard but when you do get it it's really fun like oh that's what what this stuff meant and now you're answering the questions and it's really cool so i like cooperative deduction logic games and i think the telephone 
aspect is really neat and witness. My number eight is Rosetta, the lost mm. language, which Ambi and I have talked about at length on the show before. It is a game where you are literally creating a new language and trying to help the other players discover what a specific hieroglyphic-esque symbol means on a particular card. I will say the one, not failing per se, but one downside of this game is there aren't as many cards in it as I would like. Although I suppose I could technically create my own. I could just draw some stuff. But this game, it originally, when I did my top 100, fell in teens. And I ended up moving it up because it is so unique and it is so tuned into the things that I love. And even though it is a very situational game, I have to mm -hmm. be playing with the right people in the right space at the right time. Like I tried breaking this out at a con once in like a noisy <laughs> room and oh, we immediately had to put it away it didn't work mm -hmm. at all but even though it is situational it just gives me such joy when I play it and especially when I can get people to understand what I'm doing when I'm the person creating the the symbols so that is why Rosetta the Lost Language is my number eight that one just missed my top 100 list mine was 101 <laughs> I didn't adjust my list at all after I made it. I didn't adjust much, but like, I, especially toward the top, I looked and, and like had to make some judgment calls. Oh, and if, if you want to hear like my methodology, I talk about that in one of my videos in the first video, the top 100 through 50 video. Which, I talk about. Y'all, if you <laughs> haven't seen that video, Ambi runs 100 through 50 somehow very quickly, but not like just saying the names of the games. Like you actually, I was blown away. And I really, if you all haven't seen it, please go to our YouTube channel and watch it. Click the thumbs up button on it leave a comment on it like let her know how impressive it is because i can only tell her so many times and i want other people to tell her i think maybe in future years if i keep if i do another top 100 i'll just do the whole 100 like that because making like separate videos for each one is getting annoying <laughs> and like if Honestly, the list doesn't change that much i'll just use the same like text each time that's not a bad idea and honestly maybe that's how i'll do mine is i'll just yeah. run through 100 through 11 maybe in like two videos or something it was just a lot of editing because i still like had to put the titles of every bit, every game oh, so it's like yeah. still the same amount of editing but it'll be less filming <laughs> my number seven is dungeon pets which i've mentioned a lot before it's a thematic worker placement euro game <laughs> where you're it's like a tamagotchi uh, you're feeding little pets and like taking care of them for the dungeon lords the, the pets are monsters not like regular pets <laughs> but you're basically like going to the store buying pets buying food doing all these different things and you have to like make little groups of your imps in order to to go to the places on the board and it's kind of like a bidding thing there because like the group with the highest number of imps goes first and then like the second highest goes and so you're trying to like divvy up your imps but then also get the things that you need and you never have enough <laughs> imps to do what you want to do there's lots of planning ahead too because you're like trying to get your pets ready for exhibitions and for the selling to the dungeon lords i really like the theme and it works well with the mechanics i think which i like a lot of games where the theme works well with the mechanics and dungeon pets was one of the early ones that i played i think of that yeah so one of those like heavier thematic games thematic strategy games dungeon pets is still one of my favorite games my number seven used to be ranked number one on board game geek so i guess I, and now ambi's trying to think what <laughs> game that would be that is castles of burgundy oh wait who, when was that number one on bgg i don't know <laughs> oh it was i think it was number one for a long time actually or maybe i'm wrong i don't know i, I believe it was for quite some time though okay i came to castles of Burgundy late. I just played it for the first time a few years ago and since then I have played it a lot both in physical form and on board game arena. It's one of those games that while it is kind of the same every time it's interesting every time. Like the decisions you have to make and the different types of tiles that you can get and put into your kingdom. Like the theme isn't there really at all for me but the game, the mechanics are just so solid. There is a reason and why so many gamers really, really love this one. And obviously, not every game is going to be for everybody, but Castles of Burgundy is indeed for me, and that's why it's my number seven. Yay. So apparently I lied earlier about Monikers being my favorite party game, because my number <laughs> six is uh, Cross Clues, which is a cooperative word party game. But I, I guess I don't think of it much of as, as a party game, because I play it with, like, four people. So 
<laughs> it's not I mean, like a big a, party. You can have a small party. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But Cross Clues is a real-time cooperative word-guessing party game. I like a lot of those buzzwords. <laughs> yeah, in Cross Clues, you have a grid A through E and 1 through 5. We play with on the hard mode, so it's that many. But it's like five words by five words. And then you're trying to find the intersection of the two words. So like if you have airplane, food, something else, something else on the top, and then like strawberry, camel, uh, and something else, something else on the side, then like A1 would be strawberry airplane. And you're trying to think of a word that clues that and doesn't clue in anything else on the grid. So like everyone will get a card and they're trying to think of a clue, giving it to everyone else. And then everyone else guesses. The cool thing is that this is all real time. Everyone has a grid clue card that they're giving a clue for and everyone's guessing like at the same time. So you, anyone can just say a clue for their word whenever they want. So you're all like always thinking and always like trying to guess. There's no downtime for anyone because everyone's doing everything. <laughs> so I like that a lot because with other team party games and like word guessing games, it's like people are trying to think of a clue and then there's like the, the clue phase and then the guessing phase. But here it's just all at the same time, which I like because I have a short attention span. So Cross Clues is actually my favorite party game, I think. My number six is Artisans of Splendent Vale. This is a game that I was anticipating very highly before it was released. And then when it came out, it delighted me to no end. I also want to caveat this, though, that I think this is one of those games that will fall down my list and potentially off my list with time because it's one of those games that I'm unlikely to replay multiple times. I might play it like a second time through at some point, but similar to Legacy of Dragonholt, which interestingly was also designed by Nikki Valens, same designer, it's hard to keep this game higher than other games when I gain more distance from it, even though the experience mm -hmm is amazing and so I don't know that's just how my brain works I guess but I do want to give it recognition the experience of playing through the ca campaign was absolutely magical the characters and the story and the gameplay all of it just wowed me in a whole bunch of different ways it's really special game and so that is why Artisans of Splendent Vale is my number six my number five is The Ravens of Three Sahashri, a two-player asymmetric puzzly game. The theme is kind of weird, like one person is in a coma and the other person is trying to like enter her dreams and protect her or wake her up or something. But there's numbered cards of different colors and then raven cards that are stealing those cards. But like one player is flipping over the cards and then putting them in the center and overlaying them in a little grid thing. Each card has four quadrants and you can like overlay them color on top of color and stuff. And then the other player has hidden rows of numbered cards and they're taking cards from that center that the other per person put and like putting them into her row and trying to add up to a certain number in each row it's making like a poem thematically so it's very asymmetric and very puzzly because you can't communicate otherwise uh, like you can't talk at all other than the cards that you're playing down that's not talking that's just like that's how you communicate so it's like did they take that card because they need that card or like what are they thinking <laughs> because there's certain conditions that you have to meet at the end and like the person who has their cards face down and the hidden information they know what needs to be done but like the person who's playing the cards into the middle doesn't know so like they could be playing cards and then the other person like takes it away like no <laughs> we don't need that or something but it's like is that why they took it or yeah it's a lot of like you're not sure why the person did what they did there's also like new rules that get added that I haven't played with all of them yet because like the first envelope you open, there's three envelopes that you open. And so like the first one added a lot of harder rules and we haven't been able to beat it yet with that. I also haven't played in a while, but yeah, I look forward to eventually opening the other envelopes, but that's the Ravens of Three Sahashi. My number five is Letter Jam. Mm. Letter Jam is a cooperative word game where all of the individual players are given a number of cards that will spell out a word. And you can vary the length of the words and the method via which those words are chosen. But the cards are placed face down in front of each player. They do not know what letters they have in front of them. And they end up putting them face up into these little stands in front of them so all the other players can see the letters, but they cannot see their own. And then you give clues by making words out of the letters you can see, which would be everyone's letters but your own. And so you spell a word, you put tokens in front of the letter cards, and so you'll know maybe that your letter is the third letter in this word, and you know all the other letters, and you have to figure out what your 
letter is. And then once everyone thinks they've figured out all of their own letters, they have to then rearrange the cards to spell out a word. It is super fun. I've mm -hmm. always loved Letter Jam since it first came out, and I continue to love it to this day. I'm super excited that CGE released a digital version of it on their website, similar to how they made a Codenames website. Mm -hmm. If you go to letterjam.game, you can play Letter Jam online, legit, and it's super good. So anyone who wants to play Letter Jam, hit me up. I will play with you. <laughs> You pretty much any time and yeah that's uh letter jam my number five that one could also maybe be considered a party game sometimes <laughs> but it's a, it's, it's, it's like a th it's like a thinky party yeah game, thinky right? party game yeah because everybody's sitting there staring at all the letters <laughs> yeah. sometimes just like not talking <laughs> I mean, I guess that's what, with Cross Clues too, it's like that. Well, all, the, all those word, like, <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, it's it, honestly party games for nerds, right? Like, yeah. Which yeah. are, we are. Which, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there are party <laughs> games that are for less nerdy people, like, mm -hmm. not hobby gamers, I would say. Like, there's some party games. That like, monikers. Is... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's like the... <laughs> even that one's a little nerdy, I'd say. <laughs> oh, it's nerdy. I guess I, Time's thinking... Up is more. Yeah. Or Fishbowl. Fishbowl is like the public domain, I think, of, of monikers and Time's Up. Oh, is it? I think so, yeah. All right. My number four is Fuse, a real-time cooperative game. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> Like how many real-time cooperative games are in my top 10? I don't know. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> in Fuse, the theme is you are trying to defuse a bomb. You have 10 minutes. But the way you do it is there's a deck of cards that are these bomb cards. And you have dice that you're drawing out of bag and rolling. And the cards have different requirements on them for the dice. So it would be like you have to have a blue dice here or like a number two or something. Or like these two dice need to be equal. So the, these different bomb cards have different requirements. And so you're rolling the dice equal to the number of people. And each person has to take a dice each turn and place it on their cards. And if they can't, then they have to roll the dice. And any die that matches that color or number gets taken off. So like you're doing the, all this real time. Well, taking turns kind of real time as fast as you can. Taking dice and trying to like communicate with the other people. Like I need this die in order to finish this bomb. And you're trying to get through the whole deck in 10 minutes. And it gets very frantic. It's very fast. It's easier to learn than some other real time time cooperative games I have so like it's a very easy go-to real-time cooperative game for me yeah fuse my number four is space base this is a game that when I very first played it surprised me it was one of those games that it's happened to me a number of times where a game comes out and for some reason like doesn't exist in my head I think I won't like a game like for no reason at all I'm just like I don't think I'll like that and I don't know why and then I play it and I'm like this is the best game ever why did I not play this sooner and I've played Space Base a ton both in person and digitally on Board Game Arena I've played through the campaign of Shy Pluto which is one of the like it's an expansion campaign that you can do i technically own a bunch of prototype cards of space space which i got a hold of because the aeg house used to be here in vegas mm -hmm. and they were selling everything out of the house <laughs> cool. and they like sold me their giant box of space based stuff which includes a bunch of like print and play prototype cards that john d claire had mocked up to like test with so i mean some of them have turned into real cards since then but I have a big box of Space Base, basically, at this point, and I love it. Space Base is great. You roll dice, you get to do stuff on every player's turn, not just your own, and you gain coins and points and other things to get more things, to gain more points and coins. The theme really isn't there, but the fun is, and that's why Space Base is my number four. Cool. I still haven't played Space Base. One Anytime. I, you want to get on Board Game Arena, play. <laughs> but not Board Game Arena. I know. <laughs> My number three used to be my number one and then my number two and now it's number three. <laughs> That's Tragedy Looper. So Tragedy Looper is a one versus mini deduction game, heavy logic deduction, grid logic, <laughs> themed around time loops. So in the game, one person plays as the mastermind and they know like this script where they know all the roles of the characters and then there's certain events that can happen that can make the other people, the protagonists lose. And so you're playing through multiple days and loops and like each time it loops, it's the same like day orders, like day three, there can be a murder if these conditions are met. And so the protagonists are seeing what happens and how they lose. They don't know exactly how they lose each time, but they see like, okay, this person died and then we lost. So that person's probably like important. So maybe this person is this person. And so they're trying to prevent a loss or figure out what character everyone is. 
you're playing like action cards in order to move the different characters and stuff you are not like one of the player characters on the board you're like a time travel uh overseeing everyone else kind of that can they can like manipulate what everyone else is doing on the board and the one player is also being able to manipulate things so it's a lot of like mind games and just trying to work against the one person who is trying to prevent you from figuring things out which i think is really neat for a deduction logic game like one person's actively trying to make you not deduce things so i really like that it's kind of a feeling of a hidden movement game but in this one it has more of the, like the grid logic if you like those little logic puzzle grid things so tragedy looper is my number three i did get a review copy of the new version tragedy looper new tragedies and so I, I made a video about that but i liked it before that came out and it's basically the same game so yeah tragedy looper my number three is Castell. Mm. I have loved this game since I was first taught it when it first released by its designer, Aaron Vanderbeek, at BlitzCon. This is one oh, of yeah. those like core memories for me as far <laughs> as board gaming is concerned. And the game has held up for me over the years. Anytime someone asks me to teach it, I will happily hop in and teach this game. It is a game where you are building a team of castellers to perform in a festival or multiple festivals across Catalonia. So basically, castelling is making of human pyramids where you take some big burly guys on the bottom and some little babies at the top and you stack mm -hmm. them all up. And this board game simulates the act of t building a team and taking them around Catalonia in a surprisingly thematic way while still being very strategic and fun. I love this game so much. It is one of my all-time favorites. I'll play it just about any time. That's Castell, my number three. I still need to play that. <laughs> you do! <laughs> My number two is new to the list because it's new, new, new to the list completely, yeah. like new to the top hundred. Yeah, because it was a new game, a new to me game. And it actually, this was also a review copy and we did a sponsored video, but this is Decorum. Yay! <laughs> so, <laughs> Decorum is a cooperative deduction game. So I like cooperative games and deduction games a lot. But in Decorum, you're decorating a house. You each have specific requirements that need to be met. And like all together, it will be a specific setup in the house. Like someone will say, oh, I want no lamps or like I need to have this blue painting or something. Or like the left side of the house needs to be blue or something like <laughs> So you're able to change one item, either place one on or take it off or switch it out each turn. And then the other people will be like, I like it or I don't like it or th that's it. <laughs> like, well, I, I hate, care, I right? hate like, it. Or can, like, I don't yeah. care. Yeah. But you don't know why they don't like it. And like, you're trying to figure out what their conditions are by just placing and removing these things and see what they remove. And then it's like, okay, we're trying to figure out something that will satisfy everyone. And then throughout the game, you'll be able to share some information, but like just that limited community communication trying to figure out what people need by placing things by just their actions like I like that a lot as you probably have heard <laughs> in previous games in this podcast so yeah decorum I haven't played it that much like I did play it again a couple times after I made this ranking because I made this ranking back at the end of 2023 and then like I had only played it a few times then and then I played it again a couple more times and I still really liked it so yeah <laughs> decorum is my number two my number two is a game you all have heard me talk about a ton, and that's King Domino. I'm not yeah. going to explain the mechanics. It's dominoes that you make a kingdom out of, <laughs> and I love it. I have played other iterations of it, and plain old King Domino is amazing. I never tire of it. I will teach it to anybody. I'll play it anytime. And I've gotten more confident with having lighter weight games toward the top of my list, I think, than I used to. I think I used to feel this obligation to have the top of my list to be like games with more meat on the bone, uh -huh. so to speak. And no, I love King Domino. <laughs> I will always love King Domino. I have loved King Domino. It's number two on my list. And that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Yay. My number one is the same as last time. It is Space Alert, which is a real-time cooperative game. It's a harder to learn real-time cooperative game than other ones. So I don't get it played that often. But the theme is you're like going in a spaceship, trying to survive for 10 minutes uh, while you're taking pictures. 
<laughs> and like <laughs> like figuring out like of this sector in space and then coming back and so there's all these aliens coming it comes with a cd but we use an app unofficial app for the directions so it tells you like at time eight an alien is in the red sector or something and so there's a board with the ship with the different sectors and you can move your guys around and push different buttons to like shoot lasers you can push a button to look out the window you <laughs> um, do different things you have to wiggle the screensaver on the computer you have to do all this stuff and the way you do the actions is by programming so you have these cards that are double-sided like flipped up and down that have arrows for movement on one side and then a button you push a b or c on the other side and so you're programming these actions down and in the real-time phase you're like figuring out what everything's happening looking at all these alien cards that are coming out and they have certain things that they do each time they move they'll move this much and this is how much you need to do to d defeat them and so you're like okay i'm gonna be doing the laser on turn three and so you program down like you have to program that you're moving there and then program that you're doing that and like coordinate with other people and so you push down all these cards face down and then after the 10 minute timer is up you have a resolution phase where you actually see if what you programmed worked <laughs> and a lot of times it doesn't so like you had to coordinate with people to kill these aliens and then if it didn't turn out exactly right then the aliens start shooting your ship and then things get damaged. And when that damages, then the lasers don't do as much damage as they would otherwise or something. So then everything messes up and it's always great seeing what happens. Also, like the rules explanation is longer than the game, probably <laughs> because there's so much stuff going on. But like when I do play it, I can't play it just once. We just play it. It's great for, like playing it over and over again because like the first time is the get to figure out what's going on. And then you just keep playing and trying to survive. And I love Space Alert. <laughs> and I've known about your love of this game obviously for a long time and so at a flea market at a local board game cafe last year i picked up mm -hmm. a copy of space oh. i have not learned it nor played it yet it is hard to learn I, I do have it so i at some point i'm gonna play it mm -hmm. my number one game is return to dark tower oh. Yeah, I, w I was like, what's going to wow. unseat Battlestar Galactica? And well, I think other like eight games unseated, right? <laughs> like a lot. Of, well, I mean, <laughs> yes, it's technically, but like my top three are all like, I, I think my top 10 may have entirely switched out. I'll have to mm -hmm. look, but I think it's entirely different than it was. When we used to have like Runebound and... Um, yes, Runebound was near the top. Yeah, near I'll, I'll go through my top yeah. 10 maybe really quickly just by uh -huh. name after we do this, my old top 10. But Return to Dark Tower, the remake of the original Dark Tower, which I had never played the original, but when Restoration Games released this new version, I backed it and got it and fell in love with it almost instantly. It is a incredibly unique and epic board game experience. And these are the types of games that I tend to love the most where you get to go on an adventure and this adventure happens to include a motorized tower that <laughs> lights up and an app that handles a lot of the heavy lifting for you and different scenarios and lots of cool enemies and miniatures that are amazing that Nick Murphy is painting for me that I will get back at some point <laughs> and I will be very excited about. Yeah, so I love Return to Dark Tower. It is incredibly unique and one of a kind and I would bet that that very few board game companies will ever come out with components that are as cool as the tower is in this game. So I hope that that tower lasts just as long as the electronic squawk box in my copy of Omega Virus <laughs> that I got back in the early 90s because that's still squawking and hopefully this tower lasts just as long because Return to Dark Tower is my number one. Yay. I still need to play that one too. <laughs> if you were at a con together, I am happy to teach you that one at also mm -hmm. anytime. So yeah, my top 10 before... Okay, so technically there are two games from my prior top 10 that are still in the top 10, but they both moved up. Number 10 was The Networks. Nine was Castell. Mm. Eight was King Domino. Oh, okay. Seven was Medieval Academy. Six was Tiny Epic Quest. Five was Pursuit of Happiness. Four was Runebound. Three was Near and Far. Wait, two was Battlestar Galactica and one was Star Trek Ascendancy? Wait, is that right? Oh, yeah. Did I rank Star Trek Ascendancy above Battlestar Galactica? Well, I remember I, Battlestar Galactica <laughs> being number two, I think. I really? didn't remember what was above it. I thought... I don't remember my don't own remember. rankings. <laughs> I've been telling everybody it's BSG. And Star Trek Ascendancy I remember, is... like, your top three were, like, rotating were around. Wiggly. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They were a bit wiggly. Which, uh, I mean, yeah, like... I want to see where Star Trek Ascendancy ended up in my list. 
It ended up at number 26. Oh, wow. So it's still it's still there. I never play it. Like, <laughs> yeah. the only reason it's there still is because I really do love it, but I never play that game. <laughs> I think for me going forward, I, I will kind of treat Return to Dark Tower and King Domino as my two favorites, specifically because if a hobby gamer asks me, what's your number oh, one game? Uh -huh. I will say Return to Dark Tower. If a non-hobby <laughs> gamer asks me, what's your favorite board game? I will say King Domino mm -hmm. because that's a game they can look up, yeah. they could buy, and they could play without my guidance and they could have a fun <laughs> time with it. Because that was the problem with yeah. Battlestar Galactica. I didn't want to lie to people. Not that it would really matter. Like, that's a lie that doesn't matter. But, like, I wanted to tell people this is my favorite game. But telling them that served no purpose. Like, it just... <laughs> This is a game that's out of print forever. You can never buy. You can only play it if you come over to my house. And chances <laughs> are you're not going to want to play it because it's really long and complicated. <laughs> Space Alert was slightly better than Tragedy Looper for me for like telling people a favorite game because I mean, both of them are very hard <laughs> to learn and <laughs> not approachable. But Space Alert is slightly more approachable, I think. But yeah, I guess I had to go to like Fuse or Cross Clues <laughs> probably. <laughs> I mean, I've still never played Space Alert or Tragedy looper either so we're, we're, we both have some gaps yeah. on each other's lists that yeah. we will maybe someday fill in <laughs> And that's it for this week's Board Game Blitz. Visit our website, boardgameblitz.com, for more content and links. This episode was sponsored by Great Fox Games. Coming soon to Kickstarter, Tsukuyumi Amaterasu Rising, a reprint and expansion of the epic strategy game Tsukuyumi Full Moon Down. Now with 14 total factions and a new streamlined rule set making the game faster and more approachable than ever. And if you want to buy games at greyfoxgames.com, you can get 20% off non-exclusive items by using the code BGBLITZ24 at checkout. Join the Blitzketeer community on Discord for game nights, discussions, and more by following the link in the show notes. Support the show by leaving us a rating and review on your podcast provider. And if you like us a lot and want to support us monetarily and get some cool perks, check out our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash boardgameblitz today. Our theme song was composed by Andrew Morrow. Until next time, there's a podcast going on right here. Board game discussion the last throughout the years. So bring your game bags. And your fave games too. We gonna celebrate our podcast with you. Come on now. Bye everyone. Bye. We quickly reminisce about wait, no, we didn't no, do we didn't do that. that at all. Yeah, nope, nope, nope. I uh, I put that in here thinking maybe we would and then we didn't. Uh, <laughs> no reminiscing for us. No reminiscing. <laughs> also I actually laughed out loud at this one. Uh, each person, <laughs> I'm just realizing like the, the the descriptions of all these games that I like are the same. <laughs> each person has <laughs> has a part know, of like, your top ten is kind of like samey because you you like a very specific genre of game. My top ten is like kind of all over the place, right? Like. <laughs>